SpaceX heads into the swamp as Starship readies to go nowhere. Starlink reinforces its flock as wars and rumors of wars increase. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Monday, after Booster 9's hot interstage was reinstalled once again, the next Starship Super Heavy rocket to attempt a flight to Earth orbit was restacked once again on the launch pad at Starbase, Texas. Prompting SpaceX to write on X, Starship fully stacked while team prepares for a launch rehearsal. We continue to work with the FAA on a launch license. Wow. <laughs> well, some sort of development happened that led SpaceX to remove Ship 25 from B9 once again, 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 the following day. Starship Gazer spotted workers performing weld inspections near the top of the booster the same day and the following day, so maybe that has something to do with it. Lab Padre captured the Fish and Wildlife Service surveying the surrounding area on Thursday, and SpaceX's own Bill Gerstenmaier went to Capitol Hill on Wednesday to lobby Congress for faster regulatory approval processes concerning both Starship and Falcon 9 missions. Quote, it's a shame when our hardware is ready to fly and we're not able to go fly because of regulations or review. Licensing, including environmental review, often takes longer than rocket development. This should never happen, and it's only getting worse, said Gerstenmaier. Continuing, these delays may seem small in the big scheme of things, but delays in each and every test flight adds up. And eventually, we will lose our lead, and we will see China land on the moon before we do. Hmm, that's interesting, because that's exactly what I warned of in my public comment to the FAA for the PEA back in 2021. A lot of good it did. SpaceX told Ars Technica that if the current system remains in place, they're only looking at one Starship launch every six to eight months. Not great for the program. And after the hearing, Fish and Wildlife Service told Spaceflight Now that its approval for Flight 2 could potentially last until spring of 2024. The agency has about two and a half more weeks to review the FAA's final biological assessment, then 135 days to issue an amended biological opinion. Some good news, just this morning, S-25 was hoisted again, 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 atop of B-9 and could begin wet dress rehearsals as early as today. Road closures are scheduled for next week as well. NASA is also eager to see the ball rolling with Starship. The agency released a paper updating every one of the lander program office's progress for the recent IAC event, specifically concerning Artemis 3 and Starship, but there's also some Blue Origin in there too. They began by, again, going over the series of events for the first human mission to the lunar surface since Apollo. If you would like to read it, you can pause here, but it's nothing new for those who have been following along over the years. Then they provided the update for HLS's status. I shall read it to you. You're welcome. Quote, aside from the important attention of the first orbital launch and propellant aggregation development, SpaceX and the HLS program are focused on several other activities toward the further development of the Artemis 3 lunar lander. Astronaut crews have been conducting early development training activities to assess landing trajectories and aspects of vehicle piloting during landing. Material flammability testing is being conducted to assess the flammability aspects in the cabin atmosphere environment and accounting for lunar gravity. SpaceX has also conducted development testing and analysis on crew displays, crew elevator, hot gas reaction control system, solar array development, thermal and micrometeoroid debris protection tiles, landing legs, docking mechanisms, landing software and sensors, medical systems, and recently conducted a six second static fire of its super heavy booster. The wider NASA team has conducted assessments on mission planning and the evaluation of landing site selection to maximize science goals. And last little piece of Starship news for you, Ship 26 conducted some kind of single engine pre-burner butt belch on Wednesday. It may be likely the vessel is just being used as a type of test stand for Raptor 2 engine improvement. Moving right along to Starlink now. Two more Falcon 9 rockets left Earth this week, the first on Friday the 13th, left side of your screen there, carrying 22 Starlink satellites to LEO from Slick 40, Florida. It was the 14th flight for the first stage booster, and on the right there, Falcon took 22 more Starlinkers to orbit from the same pad on Tuesday the 17th, the first stage flying for its 16th time. Both boosters landed on their drone ships successfully out on the Atlantic Ocean. Bloomberg reported that Israel is in talks with SpaceX to acquire Starlink service if the need arises. So if Zelensky would be so kind as to go ahead and FedEx Ukraine's terminals to the south, that would be great. Mazel tov. Because I want it, so you give it. But that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. And thank you members for your support. Have a nominal weekend. And until next Friday, Godspeed.